Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. And before we dive into the word of God, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. Yes, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor. Yes, you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. Yes, you alone are highly exalted. Yes, we are humbled at your grace. We are humbled at your love that is unconditional to us. Yes, we yield ourselves to your leading. Yes, Speak through us. Yes, Minister through us, yes, Heavenly Father. Let the word of God spread through all the world. Yes, that your light may shine through all generations. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor and all the worship. Yes, In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Last week, we looked at the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. Remember the first time he came. He came as a baby in a manger. Weak and helpless. He put on humanity and came in the likeness of frailty of the human flesh. But when he comes again, the Bible tells us he comes in glory, in majesty and splendor. John describes to us what will happen at that time. That he will come, not alone, but with an army following him from the heavenly host. He tells us that he comes with absolute authority, majesty, and power. We ended on the note that he will come as the king of kings and the lord of lords. It is this second coming of Jesus that will climax the consummation of human history. It is this coming of Jesus Christ that we bring an end to the times of the Gentiles. It is this second coming of Jesus Christ that we put in place the millennial reign of Christ on earth. Now we need to be watching this moment. But let's get into today's word so that we pick up from where we left and we expound more of why he must come. Because we have seen it is inevitable, he will come. But what will the coming of Jesus Christ achieve on earth? And today we will look at the first objective of his coming. In the subsequent weeks, we'll look at five more reasons why he must come and what his coming will achieve as an objective. 
Let's get into the word of God. Revelation chapter 19. We are reading from verse 17 to verse 21. And the word of God says, Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather together for the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings the flesh of captains the flesh of mighty men the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them and the flesh of all people free and slave both small and great and I saw the beast the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army then the beast was captured with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image these two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. May the word of the Lord be blessed. Here we are seeing a gruesome picture. It is a picture of death. It is a picture of annihilation like never told before. It is violence and judgment coming down. Previously, we saw John taking us to heaven. We saw the glorious picture of Jesus is coming. Now he turns the lanes back on earth. But before we see, we see that picture, he moves us to see an angel who is standing in the sun. And a lot of people have asked, is this possible? That an angel could stand in the sun. Was the angel actually standing in the sun? It is not outside the realm of possibility. From the most recent events. Uh, NASA just recently launched a probe to the sun. And, and it has come so close than closer than any other object they have sent closer to the sun. Now the angel standing in the sun is not a far of possibility now. But again, the word translated in in Greek has many lang has many connotations. It is a word that could also be translated as near all on, all at, or besides. So, any of those could make sense. But the picture here that we want us to get is what John is trying to show us, that now the 
angel obscured the image of the sun. Ekifana nje tulaba wano twagala kwete ekifana ne cha malaika yale yaimirira mu njuba nateka we kisikirize. Now this takes us back to uh, when the fifth bowl was released. Kituzaye mabeganga bakuli eyo kutane sumuludwa. We saw the sun darken. So now what could have happened previously we also saw that when Babylon was being destroyed the merchants and all the other people would see the condemnation from a distance and the judgment of Babylon. Which means that when the sun is darkened after the fifth bowel. At this will not go on forever. It, that will clear. And that will enable all these kings and the merchants to see the judgment of Babylon. Now we come so the sun will be visible again. So now we come to this point in time where now the angel again stands in the sun and when he stands he, he, he shouts out with a loud voice. So his message is not directed to any humans. The Bible says the message is directed to the birds. So all the birds that fly in the heavens. When you read the text, this is designed to birds of prey. And it is an invitation. An invitation to assemble together to the great supper of God. We have seen an invitation previously which is the invitation to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the Bible says, blessed is he that is invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now we see the contrast. Here is the invitation to the supper of the great God. And let's not mistake the two. The other is a blessing. This is judgment. Judgment on evil. Judgment on the beast. And all his followers. Let's look at this. The Bible says, assemble for the great supper so that you may eat the flesh of kings. The flesh of the commanders. The flesh of mighty men. Of horses and those who sit on them. Of men both slave and free. Of men both great and small. This is an invitation to birds to come and feed themselves on the millions that will lay dead. Of the armies that will come against the army of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the flesh they are invited to eat is the flesh of the army of the Antichrist. And we see the angel list the classes of people that will dead. This is divine judgment on evil. And the message here is that God will be a respecter of no persons when it comes to judging evil. 
Wanata and you go to the HVO Musa. We see the word flesh repeated five times. In this text, five times in this passage, in the immediate context. The, the angel is referring to human bodies that are going to be eaten by these scavenging birds. But there is a deeper meaning here. You see, in opposing God, Humans have relied on the arm of flesh. Now, what God is doing is to judge the flesh that has been in rebellion to him by allowing the birds of prey to come and scavenge on this flesh. So it will literally happen. And it, but it will have a spiritual connotation to it. John then turns his eyes to another angel. This is the angel standing in the heaven. And he sees a massive army of the Antichrist that is now gathered in Israel. And John gives us the objective of this gathering. We saw previously of an army of 200 million gathering after the river Euphrates has been dried up. What looked like them coming to take over Israel and Jerusalem now turns into a coalition with the objective of fighting the army of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that is coming. So they are joined together as a human force of one to fight against the force coming from heaven. So the beast whom we know as the Antichrist. And along with the prophets, we know that they will use spirits to go out and convince the so many armies to gather together. We saw that John revealed to us that there were frogs released and these were deceiving demons that went out to the kings to gather them for war. Zechariah 14 talks to the same. So they are gathering together for battle. But this is not going to be a protracted battle like we know it. Actually, when you read the context of what is happening, the battle is over in three verses. So what happens when they come to war against the Lord of hosts? The Bible tells us that the Antichrist and the false prophet who promoted the worship of the Antichrist. The two key human pro protagonists in this war are captured. Imagine going for a war and the first thing that happens is that your commander is captured. So here we see that when they gather for war, what happens? The beast who is the Antichrist and the prophet are captured. 
that leaves an army without a rallying head. So once these two are seized, which will most likely be at the beginning of this battle. So we are not told who seizes them, whether it is the Lord himself or his angels. <laughs> but here is an army whose heads have been taken away. And the Bible states that they are thrown alive. They are taken as prisoners of war. And thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. I want you to think about this. There is no trial. So one person asked me, said, Pastor, if the God we serve is a God of justice, why doesn't he try the Antichrist and the beast? I mean, why doesn't he try the Antichrist and the prophet? And before he sentences them, he says that that's why we have the misconception. Their trial was the life on earth. So, in the same way with us, our trial is the life we are living right now on earth. After this earth, the Bible tells us, it will be judgment. So there is no trial anywhere. The life you live and the decisions you take, that constitutes your trial. That is how the God of justice has designed our lives. And this is the first mention in scripture of the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. So, the first candidates for this lake of fire is the Antichrist and the prophets. Now, for those who die now without Christ, where do they go? These ones now go to what we call Hades. So it is the place of torment. In chapter 20 we will see Hades give up all its constituents and they will appear before the judgment seat of Christ and then they will be sent to the lake of fire so now you see the challenge we have with people who try to cast spirits into the lake of fire now we are not being scriptural Read what the scripture says and align accordingly. But I want you to see something here. Here the smoke of the torment goes on forever and ever and ever, day and night. We have seen that in Revelation chapter 14. Verse 10 and 11. So we will again see it in chapter 20. Now I want you to see how long this is going to happen. You have two people in the lake of fire for 1,000 years. So in during the millennial reign, the Antichrist, who is the beast, and the prophet will be languishing alive 
ngabalamu in the lake of fire munyanja yo muliro after the millennial reign katoluvanya re myaka re myaka olukumi nga jiwedde then they will be joined by Satan and his angels and all those that will have followed him. Sitani ba malaika be naba naba gobele da bo naba jakobe gataka ulu. Alive. Ngabalamu. They're not going to die. Teba jakusoka kufa. So let it not escape your mind. That when we leave this earth, we cease to exist. We still will be alive. Our senses will be there. And you don't want to be in a place of eternal torment. That is the message we need to get. And we need you and I need to make that decision now. Because without Jesus Christ, without having believed on him, the end is ultimately the lake of fire. Why? Because many years ago, God came down. He sent his only son in a picture of a helpless baby. He took on the likeness of flesh. Lived perfect to every law. He took on our sins and he died on a cross for our sins. And he rose again from the dead after three days and three nights. In the grave. And when we believe in what was accomplished by Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away. Our guilt is taken away. Our shame is taken away. We now become the true sons and daughters of the Most Holy God. The Holy Spirit comes on the inside of us and begins his work of sanctification that we may become a bride of Christ at his appearing. And forever we shall be with the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. Short of that, our sin becomes absolute. And when our sin becomes absolute, then the judgment of God against this sin becomes absolute. So that then condemns us to eternal punishment and condemnation. So I ask you a question. Where are you going to spend eternity? Here we don't have any mention of purgatory. There is no place to be purified. So it is either eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ. Or it is eternal condemnation in the lake of fire burning with brimstone after the final judgment. So today, you can make sure that you will, be, you will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. You a helpless sinner you a hopeless sinner can be right with God. Because he, Jesus took the punishment you deserved on the cross of Calvary. 
And when you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You will be forgiven. You will be justified before God. It is a decision you make in this life. It is a decision you can make right now and secure your future in Jesus Christ. Look at chapter verse 21. After the leaders have been taken away, the forces that are now left behind are headless chicken prepared for slaughter. John says they were killed, they were slaughtered with a sword from the mouth of the rider upon the white horse. It is like fire came from the mouth of the one seated on the white horse and devoured all his enemies, decimated every one of them. It is in no context. There is no battle. But the point here is whatever we think is physically indisputable. My brother, my sister, it is not so. It is 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 to an end. Muganda wange chilike kome ila eja kutuka. There is nothing that you see now. Teri chola wa mkati. That can stand against the Lord in his judgment. Echina imi lido kuwaka nyaka tonda nga joku sali misa. There is nothing that you see that may seem permanent now. Teri chola wa nga chita vika nge chita jaku guwa u. That will last forever. We are now living in a moment of grace where God has extended his mercy where God has extended his love to us. Where God's grace still abounds to us. It is God pleading with us to be reconciled with him. But on that day, there will be no mercy. There will be no Love to be shown. There will be no grace. There is a window of opportunity now. For every one of us. If you can hear his voice. And respond to it. His grace. Will meet you. His love. Will enfold you. His mercy will be revealed unto you. Man's greatest need is not money. Man's greatest need is not protection. protection. Man's greatest need is the need to be forgiven. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you receive this life? Because if that does not happen, you become a candidate of God's wrath. A candidate of God's judgment. A candidate of God's condemnation. And all that will be eternal. It goes on and on and on. 
The Bible, this chapter ends by telling us that all the birds that were invited to this supper were filled with the flesh of the dead. Imagine. Just picture that scenario. Where you have millions upon millions of flesh eating birds. Eating away at the carcasses of the rebels of God. It is a gore sight to behold. As you see Millions of scavenging birds taking away piece by piece of the flesh of the fallen. And why are they in this situation? Because grace came to them. The love of God came to them. The mercy of God was shown to them. But the men chose darkness and rejected everything God had to offer. Now, why are we saying this? What we have seen in this text today is a picture of judgment. And I understand many of us don't want to talk about God's judgment. We would rather talk about his love and his mercy and his grace. But the fact is this. When we reject what God has to offer, we have no anything else left for us except to meet the wrath of God. So it comes back to where we all stand with regard to the person of Jesus Christ. It's not about what you believe and what you reject. It is about who is Jesus Christ to you. Like he sat down with those men at Philippi and he asked them, who do men say that I am? And after several responses, he asked them, but who did you say that I am? Now, even you and I, this same question is still relevant. Who do you say that Jesus Christ is? Just a good man? Just a prophet? Just a nice to go around guy, a philosopher, a bright man, a revolutionary? It does not make sense until we all come to understand. Until you come to that point where you believe that he is the Christ the son of the living God. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of God. And believe it. And believe in the price that he paid. And receive what he died to provide for you. What is left for you is the judgment of God. Here, brethren, is where we all stand. At death, our eternal destiny is fixed. There is no second chance. No prayer made. No intercession made. Will make a difference. You make the difference while you are still alive. Why? Because Jesus 
Yesu is the issuer of life. Ya wobulamu. So you receive life owe wobulamu on this side of life if i may put it that way gochali mulamu mu mubiri gwo why you are still alive gochali mu mubiri guno ko this is where you get issued with life wano owe wobulamu this is where you get meaning to life wano ofuna makuru mu bulamu this is where you get healing for life wano ofuna kuonyeze bo kuli mu bulamu this is where you get restoration for your broken wano ofuna kuzibwa wo mu kubwenyese this is where you get perspective for why you actually exist wano otegera makuru mu agali mu rwacho jali mulamu short of that echo otachite like we have seen ngawe tulabye wano The first objective of Jesus Christ is coming. Is to destroy all evil. He comes to destroy the antichrist. He comes to destroy the prophet. He comes to destroy everyone that is associated with them and then establish the millennial reign so whether you go before obo he comes obo nava kunsinga tanda bakoma wo all he comes while you are still here oba wana dirango chali mulamu it makes no difference he is the issue of life ye mugabi wo bulamu wo bulamu and today era lero you can surrender your life to him osobolo kuwa yo bulamu go ja today lero he can save you Today, you can use this one chance that you have to escape the damnation that is coming on the ungodly. By surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Why don't you say this prayer? from the bottom of your heart and ask the lord to come in your life and save you wash you cleanse you and write your name in the lamb's book of life say this prayer with me heavenly father king of glory i thank you that why i was still yet a sinner you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross for my sins i acknowledge that i am a sinner helpless in my sins wallowing in my shame filled with guilt i have no help but i believe that jesus died for me today lord jesus i believe that you rose again on the third and i place my trust in you for the forgiveness of sins for my justification and for my redemption lord mukama take my life and use it from this day forward for your glory for your honor netendo and for your fame neto tumulio fill me with your spirit zijuzano moyo write my name waandike linya lya in the book of life muchitabo cha balamu thank you webali for saving me roko ndokola amen amen if you have made that prayer from the bottom of your heart esale obodi sabi okuva mutima gwo you have been wonderfully saved omazo kulokoka by grace no by works god has come god has graciously saved you now the reason number on your screen we want you to call that number somebody on the other side will pick it up 
and we give you the first instructions in this new journey with the Lord. This new journey of life. This journey where the giver of life lives in you. In you, he lives. In your heart, guiding you strengthening you, empowering you to live victoriously in this life. Now, for you who is already born again, but have not experienced this burst of strength, you have not seen the Lord come through for you. It's not too late. Jesus desires that you have life and have it more abundantly. I'm going to pray with you and believe God with you that there will be an encounter in your life that will change your life forever. A moment in your life with God that you will reckon as the turnaround as the turning point of your life in your Father in the name of Jesus Christ I give you praise and I thank you you are awesome, you are loving, you are gracious and you decreed in your word when it came to the building of the wall of Jerusalem, you said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the I acknowledge, Lord, that many times we have leaned on the arm of flesh. And that is the reason we are powerless. But I come in agreement with my brother and my sister concerning their situation in life right now. Concerning that helpless situation of life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that by your Holy Spirit you do a new thing in their lives, Lord. Those that need a revival those that need an empowerment, those that need an encouragement, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one that needs a visitation from you, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that right now, Lord, you release a fresh action upon their lives, that you cause a turnaround in their situation, that what the enemy had intended for bad will be turned out for good, Lord. I believe, Lord, for testimonies. Testimonies of victory over wickedness. Testimonies of victory over sin. Testimony of victory over the wicked one. Testimonies of victory, Lord. Lord, in this life, Lord, you did declare that you have come that we may have life and have it more abundant. I speak abundant life to their situation. For you did decree in your word that we shall declare a thing and it shall be established for us. For your word declares that you shall hear a voice. Declare here is the way walk here in it. Speak to us, dear Lord. Speak to us, precious Holy Spirit. Guide and direct the affairs of our lives. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in their lives. I thank you, King of Glory, for what you are meaning upon their lives. I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are turning around their 
perspective. I thank you, Lord, because those that are being tormented by the evil one are being healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, King of glory. For he whom the Son sets free the one is free indeed. We give you praise and thank you for the testimony. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your redemption. We receive your new perspective. We receive a turnaround in life. Hallelujah to your name, King of Glory. Hallelujah to your name, Lord of honor. Hallelujah to your name, Lord of praise. Be magnified, great and mighty, in the mighty and precious and glorious name of Jesus. We are praised. Amen. 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 God will do you well. Please testify of what the Lord is doing in your life. There is that number on your screen. And together we will celebrate God's goodness in this land of the living. So from Dominion Church, we say shalom. God richly bless you. Till we meet again.